All right. Um, so when, when, when working with the athletes in the weight room, <coughs> obviously the most important thing is we, we want to make sure they're safe at all times, they're not getting injured. It's, it's our, our, our job to make sure that they're healthy during the most important time of the season, sectionals, regionals, semi-state, state championships, where they can be the strongest at that time. We, we don't want to peak in the beginning of the season. We want to peak when it's most important, when we have all, all of our cards at stake. To be able to do that, we, we need to understand that the body, the body works as one unit. And if we, if we don't address the body from the inside out, from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, then we're, we're leaving things out, we're, we're, we're missing pieces. It all starts with the warm up, it all starts with assessing the body. We, we cannot load the body up and put a bar on the back without assessing the athlete, and each individual athlete is their own athlete. If, if I have 300 pounds on the bar, it does mean she can do 300 pounds, he can do 300, he can do 300, you can do 300. It, we're, we're all different, we're all wired different. We all have our own kinks that we have to be able to work out, which means we have to assess our athletes on a continual basis. The first way we need to assess our athlete beyond the warm up is through a functional movement screen hold ready to squat. It's the most basic assessment you can do to make sure your athlete can bend and move. If they can't bend and move, we have to assess what we can do to put them in that right position to end up being safe. And it can be something as simple as giving the athlete a heel lift. So I'll show what that looks like. It can be something as simple as mobility exercise for the low back or the ankle. I already, uh, uh, already assessed our athlete right here early before it even got here. She, she's, she's not bad. She, she'd be what I would classify as like a 2.8, 2.9, almost a 3, with some prompt things she can get her depth. She has a little uh, tightness in her Achilles. She has some tightness in her uh, lower back, a little bit of tightness in her upper thoracic spine, which Sounds like a lot, but it's really it's really not that big. It's not that deep. All, all these things being fixed within a couple of weeks if she is diligent with doing the correctives to put her in that right position. So I'll, uh, I'm not going to put her through a warm up just yet. I'm going to assess her right now. So I want you to go in. Let's, let's do a couple of different angles. Go in the space that way first. Okay. I want you to back up real quick. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to ask her to hinge. When I say to hinge, I want her fingers on her hips just like this, and I want her feet in a, in a squatter position, and she's going to hinge down, push her hips back to where her chest is barely real. So we hinge. Now from this position, I want her to pull her elbows back, so now she's activating her thoracic spine. Okay? Now from here, she's going to bring her arms up into a wire V to keep her thoracic spine activated. Her arms are going to be in line or behind, slightly behind her ears here. And now I'm going to ask her to drop straight down. We want her, her hip crease to be slightly below her knee. She's right above the barrel right now. So jump a little bit lower, a little bit more. Now this is a decent position. Now keep your head straight, look straight ahead. Now we have a neutral spot, okay? Which means we're taking pressure off the cervical spine, which we don't need a lot of right there. And now I would like her to pull her arms back even more. That's all. Oh, see her hip, hips rose, so that's our pulling her, her arms back. And she's tight here, and she's tight up here. You want to stand relax for a second. Okay, so I've already exposed two years of tightness. Okay, so now let's do that one I just introduced you to earlier today in the stream one. Okay, so now we're here, she's going to put her feet all the way together, arms above her head in a streamlined position. So, arms are going to be here. Okay, now her, her goal is to keep her toes down and heels down. Knees in line with her toes are slightly behind. I want her to sit her hips all the way down on her heels and try and keep her arms pulled back. See here, her heels want to come up, shows the tightness of the Achilles tendon. Her hips are high and her arms are still wanting to come forward, showing tightness here and tightness in her lower back. We already exposed earlier. Go ahead and stand up. Okay? So now let's go to the staggered stance that we showed you. So we'll measure that by going heel toe and step out and hit the shoulder width apart. Hands straight out in front. Now she's kind of cheating a little bit. She brought, she brought her front, her, her foot forward a little bit. Back up a little bit. Back up a little more. Still cheating. There we go. Okay. Or Superman right now. Superwoman. Supergirl. Okay? Now heel toe down still. And sit straight down, 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 down. Her toes want to come up, her left heels want to come up. That's much better than what the streamline ones. Okay? And back up. If you pay attention, you can see her how she's shifting to her left a little bit, meaning she's tight on her left side. So we want to shift back towards her right side and even it out. Let's try that again. Hands out in front and drop straight down again. There we go. That's a little bit better. Can you get a little bit lower? 
Then again, she's still shifting to the left. We want to even that out by consciously shifting our weight back towards the right side. Don't switch your feet up a little bit. What were you evaluating here? I was evaluating her, her, her ankle, her Achilles tendon, in addition to her, her, her spinal line. So a lot, a lot of athletes, if they have tightness in their lower back and their upper thoracic and their Achilles, they'll be here and they'll have trouble keeping this down. They'll be leaning forward here. She got herself in a decent position where she was able to keep her chest up, but her heel and toe weren't able to sit down all the way. So let's try this other side here to see if we're any better. Want to bend down? Yeah, up. You got to get down a little, a little bit lower. Good. Her left toe's one. Left toe's coming out. The right toe. Her right heel's coming up, and her right foot is evening out, showing a, a, a few different areas of tightness. Want to stand up and relax. Okay. So these are the first few assessments of how I would want to put an athlete through before I would put a bar on her back. Before I would have or want to have them even try an Olympic lift or a progression to an Olympic lift. So now that we, we've assessed her, we've we, we know that she's not quite a three, but she's pretty darn close. The if, if I was going to put her in a squat wrap right now, I tell her to use a heel lift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make shift the heel lift here. We're going to use some five pound plates. Don't get your squatter stands. Okay, now put the back quarter of the heel on the section plate for you. A little bit more. Okay, so now this will fix her, her body position, her body posture. So now I'm going to go over at these ones. So go ahead and hinge first. So always start the hinge. Okay, so there we go, right there. Good lean. Now go arms. And now drop straight down. And now she's much lower, much more comfortable. We fixed her ankle here. We dropped her hips. Now she's activated glutes in the hamstrings and taking all the pressure off her patellofemoral tendon. Now, now the issue is her upper back here, going to stand up, which, which we can um, assess and fix with an active resistance and having her hold on to like a PVC pipe, body bar, some sort of resistance to pin her arms back, or even just manually pin her arms back with the partner. So let's do a few more over deep squats. Go ahead and hit you again. And arms. And drop. And stand back up. Good. Now, I want you to keep your arms up throughout the whole process of going down and up. So, so start the hinge then. Start the hinge. Now we go arms. Now our arms are here. Now we stay there. Drop. Now our arms stay there as you stand up and come up. There we go. We want to maintain that neutral spine throughout the whole range of motion. Do a couple more. Hinge. Arms. Drop. And stand up. Let's try it again. Hinge. Arms. Drop. And stand up. That's much better. Just, just through some coaching and assessing her body, giving her some proper cues of get lower, arms back, she, she's able to fix herself. So it's just knowing what to look for is where, where, where's the depth supposed to be addressing the depth. If the depth's not able to get there, look, look from bottom to top of where, where the imbalances might be. Does, does it look like her heel's coming up? If it's there, then it's the Achilles or the ankle. If she's bending over, she's able to get here, but she's bent over, it's probably her lower back. If her arms are coming way forward, it's probably her upper back. There's all sorts of things that we can do to assess those issues and put her in the correct position. How you doing? What you want? My name's Jamie. Jamie? Yeah. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Jamie. Nice to meet you. Okay. So, let's, let's go ahead and assess Jamie here. You can relax for a second. Okay. I want you to do, you know, do a little deep squat. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to change it just slightly, okay? So, put your fingers here on your hips. I want you to do a hinge. And bring your arms straight up. Drop straight down. And stand up. That's not bad. Go uh, hinge again. Uh, hinge first. So use your hands and go here and hinge. And then go arms. And drop. And stand up. Nice. Let's try a stream one. So put your feet together. Arms up. Stream one like swimming. And drop straight down. Sit your booty on your heels. Not bad. And stand up. Good. Now his arms came forward there. Let's try it again. Down, and a little bit lower, a little bit lower, keep bringing knees in, keep bringing knees in, and stand up. One more time, down, and keep your knees in, knees in all the way together, there we go, and stand up. So with his knees pulling out like they are, that shows uh, imbalance in the adductors in inner thigh, which we want to strengthen that and be able to pull those together and control that. So in that way, we're able to put ourselves in the right position. That one of the biggest issues when we find when we bend or squat, is when we come out of the hole, we're down here, our knees want to cave in and they want to pull back out. So if we can train his body here in that position to go all the way down, 
and then back up and keep everything together, keep everything pulled back, we're in a good balanced position. So I want you to try to keep those knees together in this position, force those, activate those adductors there, drop all the way down and stand back up. Arms above the head, and down, and back up. Good, not bad. Now let's go a staggered stance. So we're gonna go left foot forward, heel toe, and then we're gonna step out, hip hip short width apart, go back a little bit farther with your right foot. Okay, hands around in front of you like you're flying, and drop straight down, and back up. And he's doing a pretty good job staying centered in his body. Go ahead and drop straight down, and stand back up. Looks like one of his toes is wanting to pop up a little bit. I saw you, 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 you saw that there, that's great. So we're gonna drop down, and stand back up. Not bad, it's right there on the other side. There we go. And let's bring that left foot back a little bit farther. We're cheating a little bit, one little more. There we go. And bring our arms down a little bit lower and drop straight down. Whoop, there we go. We found that tightness. Okay, let's try it again. Down and back up. Left heel there and down. A little bit lower and then back up. And relax for a second. Good job. So a couple of things that we can do to assess those ankles, those Achilles tendons, to help loosen them up, is just some, some old school stretching. And I'm going to use this right here. So the, the, the first stretch we can do, just old school calf stretch, lean into it, stretch out the Achilles, stretch out the calf. That's the first thing we can do. The second thing we can do is start with the toe, about one, one hand's width away from the wall or, what, or whatever apparatus you're using. And we're just lean the knee all the way to the rack, trying to keep the heel down. Okay. I'll do from this, let's go for some heel over here, we're here, and we're going to just lean that knee in, trying to keep that heel down. Okay, so what we're wanting to do, and if, if, if that's easy, then we back the foot up a little bit more. We lean into it again. That's still easy, back it up. We want to find a sticking point where the heel wants to come up. And then once we found that sticking point, we move back forward a little bit, and we go through that motion again. Okay. So once we found that sticking point, we go back forward, we hold, we want to hold that sticking point where it's tough to keep that heel down, force it down, and help loosen up that Achilles tendon. Something else we can do, we can grab a tennis ball, a cross ball, you have laying around the house or around any of the gyms or anything, take that sucker, take your shoe off, and just right below the knob of your ankle, take that ball and twist it in, and it'll loosen up all the adhesions inside. On the inside and outside of the ankle, it's gonna make everything more pliable, more mobile and easier to bend down and up and inside inside the ankle joint. So it's a lot of low tech ways to fix fix those immobilities that may arise. Now that we've assessed the bodies, we know she's almost a three. He is a three. He's got some uh, a few things on his left side that he needs to fix. She's got some things lower back, Achilles and upper back. She's going to assess. She's going to fix when she goes home tonight. She's going to start working on that right away. You're a mess. <laughs> We're, we're, we're all our own mess. It, it Four times? Three or oh, so, okay, so it, it's, 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 a, it's a scale of zero to three. Scale of zero to three. So if, if you're a zero and over at deep squat, it means you're under doctor's care. You're, 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 you're not able to bend or anything. You're, you're if, mean. You're mean. <laughs> if, if, if you're a one, that means you're, you're really a hot mess. You're, you're going through physical therapy. You're working your way through some, some injuries and some major issues. If you're a two, you're, as my I can't be a two anymore. You're, you're leaning forward, your heels are up, you may be here, and it's just in a very bad bending position. If you're a three, you're in that optimal position. Your chest, you got a good chest line, your arms are here, you're down and you're back up with good balance and stability and without any kinks in the hose. So, once we've assessed all those pieces, there's other assessments we could do in the functional movement screen, but this is the most basic one and the fastest one to be able to do and really just quickly pinpoint troubled areas. Now we've done that, now we would be okay to start back squatting with the heel lift. He could use what he could go without a heel lift, okay? Unless he, and I'll, I'll always present this little caveat, if you ever, if you ever find an athlete in an initial movement screen process, it may be a three, I always tell them this little disclaimer. You might be a three right now, but as soon as we put resistance on your back, and it's, it's wanting to make sure that we're addressing the body appropriately every single time we want to apply resistance, whether it be a bar, a band, a TRX strap, bow balls, whatever method you want to use to add resistance to the body. 
it's up to you. We need to continually assess the body as we're bending, moving, and doing all these uh, movements here. Okay, so it was my understanding that we wanted to go through what back squat, um, power hang clean, uh, hang snatch, power snatch. Is that correct? Are there any other movements that we're, we're wanting to cover today? Is that it? Pretty much? Okay. All right. You, you all want me to put you through a warm up or do you feel like you're, you're good to go? Maybe you want to do a quick warm up? Sure. Wow. Sure? Okay. All right. So let's, let's do my warm up here. So go and jog in place. Jog in place. Good. Nice job. Okay. So here what I'm looking for, I want their feet to be coming off the ground. They're starting to rotate their arms out their shoulders. I don't want karate chops as I define as just elbow extension or flexion. I want shoulder rotation. Okay. Now I'm going to ask them to skip rope on their right leg, so just bounce up and down your right leg, skip rope. There we go. We're just bouncing up and down, activate the Achilles, activate the ankle, the knee, the hip, everything firing on single leg, not so well. Good. Now let's go both feet. Our next transition, we're going to go high knees, not yet. You're going to bring your knee above your hip, drive your arms here to hip, and I will drive back, ready to go high knees. Good job, nice job, right here, back more, try to go back more. We're going to transition to glute kicks, USA track and field style, knee up, heel up, glute kicks go. Bring your knee, heel up, that's a butt kick, I want a glute kick. So time for a second. So the difference between butt kick, butt kick is here, okay, these are butt kicks, glute kicks are here, bringing your heel to your glute and your knee is still rising up. We want USA track and field glute kicks to so activate the, the glute, the hamstring, and we're still maintaining flexion, dorsiflexion of the ankle. And we want to get that full flexion out of the hip. Okay, so let's try glute kicks again. Ready and go. Glute kicks again. You may have a little knee aversion as you go to allow for that range of motion to be able to contact your glute. Now I want you to sprint in place. Go fast touches. Fast touch, sprint in place. Good. Now when I say power, go to a high knee sprint. Ready and go. Fast. High knee sprint, go power. Go faster, 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 faster. Now when I say wave squat, drop down here, go. Wave squat, go. Let's get your fingertips to your temples. Fly side to side. Pull your elbows back more. Pull your elbows back. We're looking for their hips to be two feet off the ground, no more. They can be less. Get a full extension out of your legs. You can glide side to side. Get a full extension out of your legs. You can glide side to side. You don't want to come up and down. You want to stay nice and low and go straight across. And you want to be a dynamic movement. Activate those hips. Activate the adductors, the hip flexors. Okay? And now, let me see if you know how to do a C skip. Ready to go. Can you do a C skip? You know what that is? Not bad, pretty close, pretty close. It's not only really C-skip, but it's a C-skip. Relax for a second. Okay, so C-skip, we're going here. Up, out, up, up, out, up, a little more room. Okay? Ready and go. Okay, so time out for a second. That's a story we to watch. I'm just going to stop you. I don't want to watch that anymore. Okay, so now, I understand you from the country. It's all good. We, we, uh, no, we've got uh, white kids in skinny jeans that can't do a C skip on it. <laughs> okay, and this and this one is set, we had we just have probably told her we told our kids hey this is great dance move for you to C skip transition into waist squat go back and forth you don't know how to dance and it's it's a lot of fun. Okay, so this this is a C skip if they have trouble doing a C skip it's just as good just to walk it out and transition and transition it's work the movement to really open that hip and really activate those external rotators. Okay, the next thing we would go into for a warm up is a pistol squat, which we worked on that earlier. Yeah. Do you know what a pistol squat is? Yeah. Let me see. Can you do one? Not bad. Heels coming up, needs to be burning out. Try and keep that knee on your big time. There we go. Not bad. Okay, so now, for, for those who need assistance, so I'm going to use you as an example. I only want you to show them what you do without assistance, but I'm trying to get you to squat. Okay, she can't get all the way down, she'll lose her balance. That's mainly because of her Achilles tightness, okay? So, come here real quick. We're going to face I'm going to be your partner. We need to be one hand to your other hand, okay? Now, when we spot this, we always want to spot from the front here, not from the side, not from here. The reason we don't want to do this is if you spot from the side, they'll end up twisting towards you, putting all that torque on that kneecap, and you don't want them. Okay, I'm just going to a couple different angles here. So now, all the way down, all the way down, sit back with the heel, stand up. Use me to pull up, okay? Use me to pull up, bench down, drop down, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, good. Okay, try it again, down, down, down. And stand up, stand up, stand up, keep that heel down. And then you get you to help them keep that heel down, so I'm gonna lift their toe up, okay? Come over this side. 
Just your other leg. Just, just for fun. Okay? So now we're here. She doesn't use her other leg. Lift your toe, lift your toe, lift your toe, and stand. Notice how her weight rock back towards her heel. Okay? That's what you're wanting to do is keep that weight back on the heel, making it easier to drive through the floor and without that heel coming up. Now go from the front one more time here. So now we're here. And she's going to go down, drop down, toe up, toe up, toe up, toe up, toe up. Good. And now that's our pistol squat. Usually we would do three to five on the right and left leg. Then we go into our push-ups, forward knee squats. I'm not going to make you do that right now. We just did it. Okay, you're now good. You're warm. But our objective with our push-ups and our air squats is to further uh, loosen up our hips, activate our central nervous system. Because we're going to make you count using your diaphragm and everything else. Because if you want to be able to move and compete well, you've got to have an active nervous, central nervous system to be able to perform well, lift a lot of weight. Central nervous system you need to be able to activate. So it's that fight and flight. You, you don't need rest and digest and everything else when you're out on the, out on the court, out on the field, doing your thing. You want to be ready to go. So why not practice the same way, get all activated before a, a lift, a workout, or anything else. So now, they're ready to go. Let's do this. Let's have, let's have you put a little bit of weight on this bar here. Okay? Yeah, do, do what you gotta do. And then let's have you set a bar over here. Put a little weight on it. She's either going to hurt herself more 
or she's going to not see the advantages of, of increasing her ability to be a better athlete. If she backs her weight down, puts herself in an optimal position of dropping her hips an inch or two below parallel, she is now in a safer position with her knee. She is now in a, in a better athletic position with her hips an inch or two below her knee. Why don't you, when she gets to that point, why don't you kind of sound off so that we get an idea of what that depth okay. is going to look like? Okay. So you're, you're okay right now. You can relax. I'm going to look at forward on those and heels right there. There you go, right there. It's good. Down, 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 and up. That's where you want to be at. So I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to lower the one down. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and try it again. Ready? Down, 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 and up. Up, up. Good. Rock that bar real quick. Okay. One thing that I just noticed here is her grip is wicked wide. She's using a, a, a hand grip on that bar as if she was doing a low back, a low bar squat. Okay? When you traditionally use a low bar squat, that bar is lower on your back, and it sends your back in a lower position here where your shoulders are now in front of your toes, and it compromises your lower back. We want to use a high bar position to take pressure off that lower back. So I'm going to have you bring your hand grip in a little bit closer to where we're about one of your fists with away from your shoulders. Okay? So now that's a little bit better. We're good. You bring your left hand in more. Bring your left hand in more. There we go. So now we're getting on the bar. Now we're in a better, better position on the back, a better hand position on the bar. Now it should be a little more comfortable for her. Go and bend down. Down, 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 and up. Good. Down again. Down, 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 up. Okay. And wrap it in. Okay, that was a much better position. She got her hips below that parallel mark. She had a better body position where she changed her hand grip, was able to keep her chest more upright, taking more pressure off that lower back, and I'm sure your shoulders felt better from bringing your hand grip in more. Would you agree or no? Okay. All right, so that's our back swap. Those are all the things you want to constantly assess while you're in the weight room with your athletes, is their body position, their hand position, what's happening as they bend and move. These are the things you do every single day watching every rep, every athlete. And if you're not in it every single day, it, it kind of can slip your mind. You can forget different things. Okay? So now that's that's what I would call a day one squat. Okay? That's what I know is what we do on Monday or Tuesday. A day two squat, I would have on a, a front squat position, bar front of your body, three finger grip, elbows par or triceps parallel to the floor. And that's a Thursday or Friday variation of a front squat. And I would have you front squat to show more imbalances in your body. The back squat hides a lot. The back squat will hide a lot of kinks in the hose that will be exposed by the front squat. The front squat is a little bit of true serum. There is even more true serum that we can put you through by having you do a soft squat, which is having you all the way up against the bar, all the way up against the rack with PVC pipe or body bar, press bar up, back, up, down to front, which I won't have you do today. I don't see any PVC pipe. Do you have any PVC pipes around? No. Okay. Is that Sarah a little tech or do you have any broomstick? You got a broomstick or anything? Oh, I'm sure we get some. Okay. If you have broomstick, you can use broomstick too. Okay, so have you ever done front squat before? You mean like right here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have you front squat for me since, since, since you're pretty good. Three, you can relax a little bit. Okay. Again, front squat position. Okay. So I don't know if you can see. Okay. He's got a good, decent three finger grip here. His elbows are pointed straight forward. Triceps curl uh, forward here. And he's going to drop down. Good. He's in a decent position. He's going to stand up. Now what I would do to spot him here, I'd have my hands under his triceps here. Go ahead and go down, 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 up. Good, down, up. Good, and let's rock that bar forward again. Good. Now I don't know if anyone can see what his knees were doing as he stood up, specifically his right knee. You probably felt this, it kind of inverted in, came in a little bit. That's something we also want to look for and address as we're watching back squat, front squat, deadlifts, power clean movements coming out of the hole, snatches coming out of the hole, all those movements, we want to watch what the knees are doing. So I would tell you as, as you're squatting, I'll use a cue of knees out, knees out, knees out, as he's driving up and standing up, so that way he can consciously do it and he can think it and understand what his, feel what his body's doing as he's bending and moving in, in the act itself. Sometimes if you wait until after the reps or sets are done, the athlete doesn't remember what that felt like. 
But if you address it in the moment, they can assess what that feels like themselves through kinesthetic awareness, what your body's doing through movement. Okay, so that's always important to do it during the movement if, if you think about it or if you remember to. So let's try that a couple more times. Okay, let's do two more reps. Okay, so now we're here. We go down, 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 up, up, knees out. There we go, you fix it. Down, knees out, up. There we go, good, and walk it forward. Now, when I say knees out, what I'm referring to is I only want the knees to be in line with the great, great toe, the big toe here as he's coming up. I don't need his knees pulled all the way out here, like in a plie. I need his knees in line with his toes here as he goes to drive up for good body position and alignment. Okay? So now we've addressed the front squat, we've addressed the back squat, we've gone through the functional strength, the overhead deep squats, streamlined squats, Superman squats. Um, now let's, let's uh, do we have any questions on his squatting movements? How do you correct that? Because I have boys that they'll do that. Right. They, what, what are you... How? For therapy, therapy-wise, it's like the yellow, green, blue cool bands. They aren't trained. Okay. So if, if you have any of those, what you can do is take those small, small, light, I wouldn't go any probably a higher degree. Um, take those bands, put it around the top of the knee. Okay, so right, we'll be right at the bottom of the quad, top of the knee with, with that band. And squat down and squat up with, with the band around the knee. That's when it's training the adductors to be stronger, to be healthier, and to be in the right position. Okay, another thing you can do is strengthen adductors. If you have any uh, larger black or purple bands, you can get from power systems, any place like that. You can do a realignment of, of the hip and strengthen the adductors. You just take the band, wrap it around from your backside, bring it down over top of your kneecap so now the band is sitting here at the bottom of your knee. Have them place the feet up against the wall, laying on their back, and they'll be like clamshell, bringing their knees in, pulling their knees out, with their feet staying flat on the wall. You want the knees in like about a 90 degree position from your shin to your uh, quad and hamstring. You're in that position, bring them in, bring them out, and you're gonna watch and they're gonna look like fish out of water, and shaking like it's all crazy, like they have a seizure or something, okay? Um, those are two basic interventions I've put in place to help strengthen that, to help them have stronger adductors and keep their knees in line with their toes. If, if the verbal cue is not working, they'll pull the knees out. Any other questions on squat? That's a great question. Any other questions? Okay, so let's, let's move into some of the Olympic movements now. So you have your power clean, and you have your hang, power clean, hang clean, which we do in both at Noblesville. Power cleans are day one, Monday, Tuesday lift. Hang cleans are day two lift, Thursday, Friday lift. We're on block schedule, that's why I say day one and day two. Um, and then we, we, we per, uh, personally, we do not do snatches. We do progressions of snatches, we do dumbbell snatches, but we do not perform snatches themselves. I can walk you through that if you would still like it, but when, when, depending on your population of athlete, it's, it's a, it's, your snatch lift is a very aggressive Olympic lift that you need to be a very proficient mover and a very proficient lifter to be able to perform well and safely. You have one, you have to have a very strong overhead knee squat. Two, you have to have a, a, a good solid uh, front back squat to make sure you've got the, the good drive coming out of the hole. You have to have a great hinge. You have to have a strong thoracic spine where your back's not, your arms aren't going to be here when you're in the red deep squat. If you're here, you have a decent chance. But if you're not able to master that position, you're in a bad position, it's going to look corrosive, and you're going to put yourself at a greater risk of injury performing that movement. So I'll still take you through it. I'll demo that. I won't have to do that. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. Let's bring a bar on here with some upper plates on it. Let's, let's do some lightweight. I don't want you anywhere near your mat. We don't need to go super heavy or anything like that. Just do a weight you're comfortable with.
missed it up, I might come right towards you. Very brave. Okay. My, my first few to my athletes when teaching a power thing, I've gone through their movement screen, I've gone through everything else, I know they're, they're safe to what? Normally I wouldn't have an athlete who's not a three perform power thing, but she's so darn close, I would have, I would have her start with her. Okay, I'd walk her through some progressions first to make sure she's in the right body position, she understands the right up and down movement, the high pull's good, all those other progressions are there before she would go to the full power thing. Okay, so the first two I give them is walk up to the bar, feel the steel. I want, when I say feel the steel, I want your shins touching that bar. That, to, to me, that's feel the steel. Okay, and I want you in a good jumper stance. So like, if you were in a basketball court standing underneath the rim, I want you the width of your feet to be able to jump up and dunk the ball if you got enough to do so. Okay, so right now that's a little squat, it's a little too wide, you're going to be a little bit closer. That's much better. That's not bad, that's pretty good. Okay, so now what I would do is I would have them use, I would use the term of edge and drop your hips, keep your head straight forward. We're going to grab down towards the bar and grab the rough and the smooth. The rough and the smooth to me is where the neural meets the smooth part of the bar. You can feel that, you should be able to feel that without uh, looking down, it's like braille. Okay, and that, that's the correct, it should be the ideal correct width for the athlete to be able to do a power play. He's in pretty decent position. Bar for her is out in front. Can you pull that closer to your legs? Good. A little bit more on the side. Can you keep a full grip there? Okay, and relax and stand up. So I would have them hold that position, what I call the power position, 20, 30 seconds, and then stand up. Just get used to that position when you're teaching the movement initially. So feel the steel again. Walk up to the bar, feel the steel. Bend down, grab the bar, throw off in the smooth. And now we're here in this position. You got a little larger athlete, alignment, something like that. They're a little broader shoulder. If you want to tell them they can, they can go thumbs out and then wrap their bar so you get a little bit wider grip, you can do that as well because they're just a little bit more broad. Then I want to see where they're at with their deadlift. So I'm going to stand up with the bar and put it back down again. Are they able to keep their chest up, their back flat, and go straight up without any rounding of the back and back down again? And so with the deadlift and back up and then back down. That's not bad. Pretty good. Let's do uh, two more reps or on your own. Two more reps on the watch. Good. Now, from this point, I would have them do what, I, what we call a little tiptoe human hot dog. So, after Mrs. Doubtfire or Coach Clark did, all it's as simple as it sounds. You're going to pull the bar up, up to your tippy toes, shrug your shoulders, and you like a human hot dog. Okay? Tippy toe human hot dog. Okay. So, let's, let's try it, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, bend down, pull the bar up, finish on your toes, tippy toe human hot dog, and back down and reload. Okay? Head straight, neutral spine, and do it again. Up, finish on your toes, and shrug the shoulders and back down. It's a quick pause and then back down. Go ahead and do three on your own. Good, nice. Now the next progression from here, assuming everything's going smooth, they're doing well, which they are, I progress them into their high pull. Elbows to the sky as soon as their sh shoulders shrug, they start pulling that bar to the top of their chest and they relax and come back down and reload. They always want to finish on their toes. So try that a couple times. You have three times on your own. Keep your back flat as you can. Let's just go to the high. We don't need the full clean. Let's go to the high. There we go. Try to make it a little bit smoother and faster. He's already ready to drop on that bar. I can see it. <laughs> okay. So then, assuming the high pull, the, the deadlift phase looks good, the shrug looks good, their high pull is up to the top of their chest. Now the athlete is ready to drop under the bar and catch the bar in a three finger front squat position. And the way we press that nose, though, is we want you to drop down in that deep position here, get down, and then stand up. That way, a couple reasons. One, it, it, it forces your confidence. Two, they have basic glutes and the hamstrings. And three, you practice driving out of the hole to generate that force similar to your squat. Okay, so let's back up the bars just a hair so we're not so close to our coaches there on the wall. That's good right there. Let's practice the full clean now. Do three reps. If you miss, just drop the bar, don't miss.
drop lower. Going wider. Try to keep your feet in that jumper stance when you drop down. Okay. Good. And relax. Once you're done, relax. Okay. So that's not bad. One thing here that I noticed on her power clean is when, when she went to catch, a defense mechanism in her head said, holy crap, I'm scared. Now I know that, one, from looking at her facial expressions, two, her feet shot out like this. That's, oh my god, what am I supposed to do? You're telling me to pick this weight up, you're to sit down under that bar with this heavy weight, you got to be crazy. And her brain's telling her body that. So that's that defense mechanism. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? So she goes here and she gets here and she stands and walks it up. Okay? Over here, what I'm seeing is when he goes and gets that down position, his back's all around. His elbows are luckily staying high enough because he doesn't have heavy weight on. But I'm, what I'm going to assume is when you get heavy weight on that bar, you tend to drop your elbows a little bit. Am I, am I right? And an assumption? Okay. I, 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 I'm not seeing any power coming before. Okay? So, and then two, his feet like to ever it out as well. Okay, so I want you to do a couple more reps, please. Let's take a look. Not bad, that's much better. That's not bad either. That's, that's a whole heck of a lot better right there. Heck of a lot better. There's, 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 there's several ways to do the power. There's, there's, there's some schools of thought that say, I want to lift for velocity, I want to just move the bar as fast as I can, so I'm going to catch it here, I'm going to stand up really fast. Right. Right. That, that's not wrong. Okay? But you're missing a whole other part of the pod when you're just catching high leg. You're missing the activation of glutes and the hamstrings catching low, and then you're also not training the brain to get through that confidence. So when you, when you can catch low, you got you put 235, 300 pounds on that bar for a guy, you put 125, 135, 140 on that bar for a girl, and they can get all the way down, boom, get here and stand up with that confidence, that little chest pump. I just did that on my own. I got under it. I could stand that bar up with no problem. That's a confidence booster. They know they can accomplish anything on the field, on the court, or anywhere else they go and a job interview or anywhere else because they can do that and they, that's the scariest lift you can ever do aside from the snatch. Okay? So that, that's one of, one of the other reasons why we have to catch that full squat position is for that confidence and for that glute hand activation. Okay? So I, I would rate her right now, I know this is your first year of power cleaning, as, as an average power cleaner. I'd rate him at using teacher lingo as an effective power cleaner. You have, in, in teaching, you have effective and highly effective, or proficient and highly, and highly proficient. I would rate that as, a, as effective or proficient, okay? Highly, highly effective, highly proficient power cleaner. Those hips will contact that bar. You would smack that sucker, accelerate that bar with the high pull, drop under and catch that bar. So I'm gonna do a couple real quick. So we have a highly effective, it looks something like this. And I'm not warmed up or anything, so pardon me here. So we're here. Now we're here, and now we drive, and we stand up, okay? So then we're here, we pull, get, pop under, and now we're here, and we stand up with that bar, okay? That's, that's what the highly effective power cleaner looks like, that great triple extension, ankle and hip, explosion, boom, pop in that bar, and now we get dropped, and we get those elbows underneath. Power cleaner is one of my favorite ones, because it exposes how, how athletic, is, is this happening? Do they have great triple extension? Basketball, football, lacrosse, soccer, any sport you name it, swimming, starts and turns. You need fantastic triple extension to be a good athlete. Or you can be a great athlete. If you especially if you aspire to go to the next level and play college, whatever athletic endeavor or event that is, you have to have great triple extension. The power clean does that for the athlete. It forces them to have to come through, boom, pop, explode, drop under, stand up without a problem. That's where we want to get our athletes to. What did you, what did you mean by triple extension? So ankle, knee, and hip all extend together. The ankle, knee, the hip all extend at the same time, move together as one unit. Okay, when that can happen on a consistent basis, now we can develop power. 
now we have a chance to blow that sucker off the line of football, to change direction fast, whether it be basketball, uh, soccer, swimming, great starts and turns coming off the blocks and track or in swimming, coming off the wall for your swimming on your turns, anything that you do in basketball and, and getting that jump shot, being able to cut and change direction, it, it, it helps us be a better, well-rounded athlete to have that triple extension. And if we, a lot of high school athletes have great ankle knee extension, but the hips want to stay back. Getting the hips through is that final, final ingredient that's going to come through practice or repetitions of different progressions. Um, on, on your sheet, on one of the sheets in your packet, it says the bar routine, the bar complex. You have to take the bar. And yes, on that progression, there are a lot of what we call snap strip movements. But that, that, that's just to help emphasize the hips coming through. That's to help improve the grip and forearm strength of the athlete to carry over and translate into their power play. So the first movement on that list, and on all these, uh, we, we use on a daily basis every single day at Noblesville to help the athlete on their power play intentionally. We do these every single day. We do not get rid of them 24 7. We've, we've recently got into adding weight to this bar routine as well. So, the first progression traditional power clean grip, rough and smooth, narrow grip here. We're going to load, and we're just going to do take the dog and hop dog four times. Coming through, really popping those hips, keep that bar close, and yes, this is all from the hang position. We don't prefer the hang clean, we prefer the power clean from the floor, but Doing from the hang position is the easiest way to learn how to get the quad contact in the bar and that hip extension coming through. That's the easiest way to do it. So then we do four that way. Now we go four from the snatch grip, wider grip, tip to the hot dog again, we're here. Four times, and we go tip to the human hot dog with the high pull, and that snatch grip slow. Now we're here, boom, pulling it straight through, and our last component is the hip pocket. Pop, extend, triple extension, and come back through, sit back on your heels. That's the bar complex and the bar routine we use to really drive home the triple extension and getting the hips through and quads contact in the bar and translate that power clean and other movements. That's what guarantees us to be able to be fast, be explosive, and be trans transition into being a better athlete. So you are popping the bar with your quads? Yes. And then the last one you did is you know, when you were in that, um, that snatch position here. Yes. You're, just, you're, you're throwing the hips out. Yeah, the so I'm here, here. I hinge, and boom, I just toss it over here. But at the same time, I'm keeping that constant shrug in my shoulders. What a lot of kids, you, if you implement this technique or this routine, on, that, on a lot of these you'll see the kids do a front raise. Completely corrosive. How to prevent that is force the shrug. If you shrug, you cannot raise the bar. Seriously. Try it. He's extraordinary. He might be able to do it though. Why is he able to do it? Shrug your shoulders. No, nope. just shrug. Hold that shrug. Now, can you raise the bar out? <laughs> You're right, coach. You look pretty so you, 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 you do have your athletes like this who are just freakishly strong and traps the shoulders and they got that wall strength. Okay, but now I'm going to critique, I'm going to position you a little bit. Okay, so now we're here. Now shrugging. Okay, now lift. More, more hard, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we force that position. And now bring your hips forward. Bring your hips through, boom, pop. Okay, now, I don't want you to raise this time. I just want your body to do what naturally is. Wide grip, snatch grip. A little wider. Feel it taller. There you go. Shrug. Pull. Now the hips go through. Okay, now, here's what I want to have. That bar is going to stop right here. Okay. Hinge. Again. That's where it's supposed to stop, right here. Hinge. Pop. Boom. That's where you want it to be, okay? The bar should not come out. That's a completely different movement. That's corrosive for this complex. If you want to do shoulder raises for your shoulder girdle and everything else, we got dumbbells, we got plates, we got bands. 
we can do all the all the job work for baseball, softball, swimmers, and everything else with bands, lighter weights, and everything else. So a whole point they know that they should be popping it and it the hip is generating it, not your not your Yes, it's, it's, it's the speed and the power of the hips, not the force of the shoulders. That, that's all. That, that's what our athletes know and understand. But you, you always get the you always get those few athletes who are students who just don't care. They're in there for the credit or. They're, they're, they're in, a, in a sport that's a non-cut sport, and they're in it for the PE credit. You, you know, every, every school has their sport has them. So those, those are outliers. And then you have some athletes that are just going through the motions on, on a bad day. They broke up with a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. They pinky to the sky. They don't care for whatever reason. And they're just going to do what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got them. Um, so that, that's a bar routine we work every day before, uh, during class, after school, or, or before school group works that bar routine. It helps her power clean, helps her hips, helps everything else. The last, and uh, you can always do the hand clean variation too. Uh, the only major difference between the hand clean and the power clean is a start position of the bar. The floor versus that up position, that hinge right here, and pop and go through the same cycle of the high pull and everything else get down here and back up again. I know my left leg popped back. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it myself. I have my own asymmetries and imbalances, but I can assess and feel my body and movement. I, I keep working on it myself. No one's exactly perfect unless you're an Olympic lifter for competitions and you're just a freak of nature and you're just perfect. That's all you do all day out of you. Um, your snatch. I, I would start with the same progression as I would for power clean. Can you pull the bar? I'm going to use this bar right here. Can you pull the bar in your snatch grip from the ground to the top? First progression. Ground to the top. Now can you shrug? You can shrug. Okay. Now can you high pull? Here. Good. Now if you can high pull, can you drop under the bar and be able to stand up? And this, again, is one of my favorite lifts. I don't practice it that often. I actually hate the snatch, but it's a, it's a lift that a lot of colleges use. It's a lift that a lot of um, high schools use that have naturally gifted fast twitch athletes. We don't have those. So we're not, we, we don't teach it because we don't want to put our kids at, at that risk because we, we, we don't have kids that can over heavy squat well all the time. We have them. They're good most of the time when you put weight on, on over their head, things like that, and bounces start happening. The hang snatch is the same thing. It's from that hang position. We're here, down, dip, pop, shrug, that pop, that good shrug here. And now if you come through, get down, and then stand back up, bring it down, and be low. The biggest thing about your snatch, aside from are they a three movement screen? They have a decent overhead deep squat with the bar above head first before you even go into the snatch. Where am I trying to go? Let me see. Okay, we went with the snatch. It, it's your, your, your snatch and your bar have to move seamlessly together. And if you don't know how to approach the bar the right way, with the right grip length for your height, then it's, it's, it's going to be a whole disaster. You got people snatching from a narrow power clean grip. You got people snatching from this wide grip all by the head of the bar over here. Now they're way up out of here on the upper part of your hip, and you're going to get bruised on your son. You're going, what, coach? Why, why, why is my son? Well, look where you're gripping the bar. That's wrong. Okay, so what we do to measure the grip of the bar, if you want to get technical, what you do, one arm out, go to fist. You go opposite shoulder to fist. Okay, and what we do is we take that distance, we bring it over the bar, come down, and that's the position for a snatch based on his size. Best thing to do is take a tape measure, measure it out, bring it over, mark it up with some chalk, and then that's, that's your snatch. A generic, a generic way to find your grip. You don't have that time. You don't have the chop, the mark the bar. You don't have the tape measure. Here's what you do. 
Walmart version. Okay? You're a shorter girl, walk up to the bar, pinky to the silver ring. Pinky to the silver ring, and now make your grip, and now that's going to be your snatch grip. Okay? Now put the bar down. You're a uh, average size uh, individual. Go, you can either go ring finger or middle finger to the bar or to the silver ring. There you go. Based on his size and a cue, you want to be right in the hip crease. Okay, you want to be right in that hip crease right here, about an inch below his hip bone. That's where you want the bar to sit, is right here. Okay? Now, if you have a taller individual, Coach, going over here, here with taller. Pat's taller than I am. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Index finger to. That's my point, right? Index finger. Yes, so now, for 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 his size, six four, six four, is 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 this wide of a grip? So I'm six one. I would use my middle finger. He's he's six four. He uses his index finger. He's a little bit shorter than I am. I'd have him prior ring finger. She's a, little, uh, a lot shorter than I am. She's an average height for a uh, lady, so I'd have her go uh, pinky finger to the silver ring. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So there are ways to do with that too, right? Exactly. So going over, we'll, we'll try it. I don't think we'll, if they put the bar above their head and they move their hands out until the bar is about six to seven inches maybe above their head, would that be a good indicator to do it? Uh, that's, 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 not, that's not a bad indicator. Um, how far do you want the, the, the bar? How far do you want the snatch when they get the finish position? What what I don't want is let me phrase it this way. What I don't want is you to go so wide where your hands and wrists are bending and you're see how my pinky starting to get my back my palm or towards my pinky. It's not kind of the bar anymore. That's what I don't want. I want my fist to be able to stay full contact with the bar, palm and everything. Okay, so when I get out wide where my fist is no longer able to stay in contact with let's say my palm by my pinky, it's not able to stay in contact with the bar anymore. That's where I'm too wide. I want to be myself in this position here. Now my whole my whole palm is now able to stay in contact with that entire bar in my up position. Okay? You'll, you'll also find some other cues I, I gave you in that uh, little, uh, packet chip on, on bar height, safety, 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 safety precautions. The biggest thing, like you just pointed out, is the height of the bar in, in relation to the top of the head when feeling a when feeling over it. And knowing how to feel over the proper way. You get in that bad position, depending on how experienced your lifter is and what's around them, they just dump it forward or they dump it back. There's nothing behind them and they just drop that stuff. Just let it go. Uh, we would tell our kids, you know, so just let it go like frozen. Just let it go. <laughs> okay? And it's, 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 it's not really <clears throat> that deep of an issue. You got bumper plates. You got to cost a little bit of money. But we'd rather save your, your life save your back, yeah. and save your back than worry about breaking a, a bumper plate, which is going to take thousands of drops before that even comes close to half. Hey, Jeremy. We usually go about an hour, and that's about where we're at. Yeah. And out of respect to all their time and yours yep. as well, I think maybe we can open this up if there's any, Absolutely. any questions. Here, and I will also say that, that Jeremy has, has offered to, to come back about any time we need to, and I think maybe um, and you guys can give me some feedback, maybe not right now, but at some point in time, maybe another session with coaches and then have him see some of our kids or maybe just go right into the to the kids this summer when we can get some kids in here too and start working through there and he can help start identifying some things and some ways to help fix it. But that's kind Absolutely. of my goals going forward. And so you guys can, if you have any questions or anything else uh, here this evening. Yes. Uh, when they're at the finish at the bottom. Yes. When they're all the way down deep. Yes. I noticed his are, are really pointing out, yes. and his knees are shooting out, yes. and yours, yours are working toward. Yes. Is that something we need to address and control yes. more? Absolutely. Because that can cause yes. Like, so knee damage. The, the the biggest problem with that is especially as they go up in weight on the bar, they, they they get they come into a, a fear mechanism of I don't know what to do in this down position. So their body freaks out like. 
no response when she did. She wanted to just whip it wide, though. Okay. It's, 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 a, it's, the same, it's the same idea of, okay, I'm down here, my, my feet just want to go out. I don't know kind of how to correct that, so I'm just going to let it happen. The biggest thing that I, I do with my athletes is this, is I have to take a step back in the ball. Okay? You're on the platform. You're on your, you're on your platform there. Take a step back. I have them just come straight up to their toes, drop straight down, work on keeping their toes more forward. If they're slightly turned out, I'm okay with that. As long as they're not wicked people, they're not like this. We're, we're, we're not trying to do ballet plies and everything like that. That's not what we're doing in here. If we have any dance coaches, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend you. Um, the other thing, we, 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 I personally, when I do my power cleans, I tell my athletes, I want you to finish the way you started. Okay? Now, there's, there's a leeway in there. I, I don't mind if my athletes land in a squatter stance. I don't want my athletes wider than a squatter stance when they go to catch and land here. Okay? I want them no wider than a squatter stance here and back up. But if they can get in a jumper stance when they finish all the way up and back down, that's why I want it to happen. So I have an intention to step back in the bar, come up, drop down three or four times, get comfortable with it, walk back up to the bar, go through the lift again, usually that'll fix it. If it doesn't fix it, then I, I take them more and more aside and work on their fundamentals and everything else one-on-one, -on -one, and we address each issue as it pops up. Coach, do you have the evaluation of the flexibility stuff? We got it on tape. I gave you the overhead D squat. I did not give you the streamlined Superman ones. Um, we just started doing those here recently. Um, I, 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 I can type those up. I can give those to you. And I'll probably send those to Coach Mr. Strong there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give them out to you. Um, but absolutely. Um, and then two, the general we stole those from is Dr. Kelly Stewart from San Francisco. He's a Big mobility guru. He, he's on Twitter, YouTube, and everything. But we actually stole that stuff from him. So if you go on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, type in Dr. Kelly Sierra, you can find all the information as well too. So we literally he, he we had a play clinic at Noblesville about the beginning of this year, and he came and spoke at our clinic, and we literally just stole it straight from him. And we've been doing it ever since. I answered his stuff. We we we've seen a huge increase in mobility of our athletes, the Achilles. A low back and everything since we started doing it. This is a fantastic thing for us. I'll get that, guys. I'll, do, I'll get that to you guys. Thank you. Other questions?